The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. Today I have with me Marla Rickman, who is the soil management specialist for... For Manitoba Agriculture. Okay, so what can you tell me about soil erosion? Sure. So we are here to talk about tillage erosion, most specifically. Um, so tillage erosion is the biggest erosive effect out of all of the different types of erosion that we see in the Canadian prairies. A lot of people focus on wind or water erosion as being the biggest impact and they forget about the fact that the tillage tool actually moves more soil than anything else. So if we're thinking about the effect of tillage or moving soil with iron up and over a hill or even on a flat landscape, that will move things more so than the wind and water. The issue though is that tillage also makes the soil more susceptible to wind and water erosion because it breaks up or pulverizes soil surface and then just basically the soil is more apt to, to fly or float at that point. So what can you tell me about speeds when it comes to that? Okay, so speed is a big factor and something that people don't always think about. So when we think about tillage from the past, we think about something like a moldboard plow, where basically you would take a big chunk of soil and flip it upside down completely. You move a lot of soil a short distance. Yes, it's very erosive in that case, but when you actually start picking up speed, soil flies a lot farther or moves farther or with more variability. So if you're going up and over the hill or like uphill or downhill, you get more va variability with higher speed. So when we see this movement to high speed disks or shallow, uh, shallow tillage, we think of it more as a conservation tillage because it's not going as deep, but we're moving with such great speed, we cause a lot of variability in soil movement. And quite often soil moves a lot farther than we think it's going to. Um, so that becomes a bigger issue, especially where we're seeing these transitions after some wet years to using more of these residue management type tools in no-till land. And so there is a risk of having higher um, tillage erosion happening again with these types of tools. So what are you recommending to producers out here today? So it depends a little bit on the producer's kind of situation. So I often will recommend going to reduce or no-tillage. That is kind of where I come from. I want to see more conservation or basically, you know, taking tillage out of the equation completely. But not everybody has the ability to do that. It depends on what they've got for a seeder, planter. Can they get their fertilizer all down in one shot? Do they need to use tillage or some kind of tool going across the fall, whether it's knifing in anhydrous or something? to be able to kind of manage that. So we really need to think of the farming system and all the different pieces of equipment or implements in the system as a whole. I like to think though about if you're going to be tilling the soil, varying that up a little bit. Where I've seen people move towards high speed shallow disking or this kind of shallow tillage and they're doing every acre every year, we're starting to see problems with more you know, soil movement, higher, um, we're getting compaction or a new compaction layer starting around two inches because it's the same implement on every acre every year. So I do like to see a bit of a varying of tillage implements and really thinking about what residue you're trying to manage and where that tillage equipment should fit into kind of the general crop system and the crop rotation. So what can you tell me about soil health across the prairies right now? There is kind of a variety of thoughts on this, I guess. Um, in general, if we're seeing less soil movement, I feel like that is kind of a healthier system. Soil health as a kind of a buzzword is great. It gets people talking about soil. You can, um, at the booth we've been talking with using the soil undies test and talking about that. It's really ways to get people discussing soil and soil conservation. Um, there's just such a variety of soil types that we have to deal with that you can't really compare apples and oranges, right? And so when I deal with the Red River Valley where I'm from, um, I deal with that concept or discussion about soil health very differently than in Western Manitoba where we're on hillier landscapes, lighter soil. Um, so in general, people are doing pretty good. But again, if we're seeing these impacts of erosion, then that's not a healthy system. If we're seeing impacts of, um, I, don't, I don't even know how to put it all. Like, there's just so many things that you can look at with soil health. I deal mostly with compaction and salinity. 
So some things like salinity, we don't have a lot of control over because mother nature kind of throws a wrench at us, whether it's wet or dry, causes a lot of that salinity, but how we manage it and decrease that impact into our cropping system means that that soil can then be kind of deemed healthier in that situation. Awesome, anything else you'd like to add? No, I just, I'm happy to be here today. It's a beautiful day and we're going to be running some tillage equipment and uh, people are already starting to come by, which means that we're going to have some fun. Everyone loves a little horsepower when we uh, run these things. And uh, it's just yeah, a great day and happy to be in Alberta. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much.